Hey guys, this is Joseph. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today I received the able to move. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to walk you through some of the patch creation workflows, how it works, uh, how you can upload your own patches uh, to be able to move from Ableton Live. So yeah, let's get started. So Ableton Live doesn't enable you to export presets just yet. So you need to turn on uh, this feature via the options.txt file. So what you need to do, if you're on Windows, you have to go to App Data, go into Roaming, Ableton, uh, find the version of your live. It's 12.1 uh, at the moment open preferences and you can either download uh, this option.txt file or just add this line of text right here and that will enable you to export your presets to to the format that uh, able to move and node supports as for me i'm running a mac so i have it under my users library preferences okay so right here preferences ableton i have a lot of versions of ableton uh, but i'm looking for this one live 12.1 and here is the options.txt file as you can see this single line of text is what you need make sure that this is also included and when you next restart your Ableton Live it's going to work so what we're gonna do I already made some preparation on my end so the I don't know when Ableton uh, released this but there, there's this collections thing so with the collections you can uh, group the instruments that you like that you use often whatever uh, what I did is that I collected all of the instruments that uh, that able to move support so if you want to do this uh, the easiest way is to pause the video right now uh, create a collection for your move devices and add them right here what I also have here is uh, two templates so Ableton also provides templates uh, I recommend reading through this whole pr page, uh, the presets on move help page on Ableton's website. So what they also have is uh, two templates right here. So you have the move and node drum rack and move and node drift template. The reason why I'm not using these is uh, they renamed some of the macro parameters, which means that uh, even if you assign something to it, it's not going to take over the name automatically it's it's going to stay with uh, whatever Ableton picked and here are the stock Ableton templates so you can see map trip parameters to see them on move and note okay so what happens if you assign it to map so it's not going to take over the name you're not going to be able to see the cutoff frequency so I don't recommend using this it's also really easy to create your own so going back to collections I'm going to create drift so let's say uh, that I want to create a simple two operator FM complex oscillator type uh, sound the LFO in uh, in drift is really smart in that way that you can tie it to pitch so the currently played pitch so how I like to set up my uh, devices is I try to go from left to right uh, try to follow the signal path and mimic that but before we get to that so let me explain how move patches work so right now what you can see here and uh, I guess it's easier to show it uh, this diagram right here so how move patches are structured is that they come in an instrument rack and within that is instrument rack you have another instrument rack 
and uh, two effects if you are talking about drift. And within that instrument track, uh, the inner instrument track, you have the drift. And what you can do is map the macros for the instrument track that contains drift. So what you want to do is map your uh, macros to this instrument track instead of uh, this one. So yeah, you can see I also mark it as an op so that I don't accidentally uh, map anything to that. Uh, these are the effects, the inline effects. Uh, you can see that there's a, a lot of devices, well, not a lot, but, uh, but plenty of devices that you can pick from. Okay, so let's, let's do something. Maybe I want to make sure that uh, I pick a sine wave because uh, West Coast love sine waves and wave folding also really works well with sine waves so yeah what i'm going to do i'm gonna map the wave shape to the first oscillator uh, i disabled the second oscillator because i don't need it uh, what i also want to do is uh, map the lfo uh, to the macro why because I'm going to be able to modulate how much FM is happening. So I'm going to rename this FM depth. What I'm also going to do is make sure that we are going from zero to 100 and uh, not from minus 100 to 100 because that, that's something that I don't really need. What we are gonna also do is map the ratio of the complex oscillator here. And uh, let's say that we're going to use the frequency. What we also need is some resonance. It's, uh, so this will not be like the traditional West Coast style instrument because they don't use filters. Instead, they uh, enrich the timber with FM or wave folders or whatnot. We're also going to make sure that the refiguring is still on so that uh, we have consistent notes. Whenever we hit them, it will always sound the same. It, no drifting. You can turn it off if you want. For these demonstration purposes, it doesn't matter. I'm going to also make it monophonic because why not? Turn it down to four voices and uh, I can also do some cycling envelopes. I think that's that's also a good thing. So I'm going to map this to macro six. I'm going to map the rate to macro seven. And let's say that I want to have some control over the drift of the oscillator. So I'm mapping that to uh, macro seven. As you can see, we mapped out all of the mappings that we wanted to do. So what we now uh, should do is set up the effects. Uh, I'm not going to go with uh, the delay at the moment. I would rather use the chorus effect and uh, maybe add some reverb, not much. Uh, you would be able to customize this. I'm going to try to tame some of those harsh higher frequencies turn on the low cut effect and that's pretty much it so what you need to do is you need to export this as a as a move slash note uh, preset what i'm going to do is go here and save it as lead and west coast so we don't know how this sounds, but it doesn't really matter because I have a rough idea on how it will sound and what uh, choices I can make by changing these parameters. So I'm going to also save it into my Ableton Move instrument track folder, LD West Coast, drop it into my, uh, my folder. Okay, what we also want to do is uh, demonstrate how this whole thing works with drum racks. Again, I pre-created a drum rack and uh, this is how it looks like. You can have uh, one send effect 
so right now here it's uh, it's a reverb what I want to do is add the delay effect here into the sand channel I'm going to make it a ping pong and uh, add a reverb here and now I just need to fill these 16 slots with a preset so I'm going to go into my good friend uh, Exxon Audio XO and uh, find a drum kit I'm I'm not going to listen to the example I'm, I, this is just for demonstration purposes okay so I'm gonna take my good friend XO here and uh, start throwing in the samples one by one it's uh, this is kind of a tedious process but uh, who cares so you go into your samples if you would just drag and drop drop everything then it wouldn't load it into a drum sample so I need to make sure that I'm using the drum samples uh, because that's the only device that uh, that move and uh, note recognizes at the moment you see this is what happens if you mess up you need the drum sample you need to load your samples into the drum sample instead of just dragging and dropping it here you see there is like 16 slots so what i'm going to do is just find another drum kit uh, again this is just for demonstration purposes so it doesn't really matter uh, what i'm loading here you're gonna use your own samples kind of wiser to have like one shot uh, samples here that you can sequence chromatically you know it all depends on how you structure your music uh, what you plan to do with your device and your projects okay so we loaded everything up into our drum neck we have the send effect here and we have an insert effect uh, affecting the whole drum rack so i'm going to name it as dk drum kit let's call it test so we have DK test here. I'm going to drop into my Ableton note folder. This is not required if you upload it to move directly because you can just uh, export it as a move preset. Again, we go here. Uh, I'm saving this temporarily into a folder. That's pretty much it. Now comes the fun part. Here is Ableton move. It's uh, going to take some bit of time to start while it's booting up first have to set up wi-fi so if you haven't set that up connect to that wi-fi and uh, i'm just gonna open the move manager so if you're on the same network uh, as uh, you're able to move and you open up move.local uh, it will connect to able to move uh, there is this thing confirmation code or uh, security code so you need to enter that and voila you can upload your presets so I already uploaded one preset but uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to upload another one and we also need a drum rack and uh, you can just easily drag and drop files so that's what i'm going to do i will go into here where i saved my ableton presets i'm going to choose west coast sure i want to upload it i'm going to upload my drum rack as well yes and it uploads all the presets as well uh, samples as well and uh, here we are. It's working. So same thing with the drum. You scroll to the bottom of the page uh, of the preset selector page and you can load it, the drum kit that you added. Here we are. It's already here. That was it guys, it was really simple. Make sure that you read these lovely 
help notes from Ableton. They're going to show you how to do this. Uh, but if you're more of a visual person, let's hope that th this video helped you overcome some of those hurdles of getting started with creating your own presets. So thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, comment, or, or just have fun, make music. Cheers.